soon and you can reach us when others can't and it's, and it's difficult for a whole, whole variety of reasons. So, well, may the Lord bless you as you spend time here today. So, just uh, welcome you all here to Crowhurst Christian Healing Centre. My name is David, one, I'm one of the chaplains. And uh, this is indeed a, a new season, isn't it? Uh, in so many ways. Uh, it's just so lovely to see you all here and just a welcome to those that will be following us online. And uh, we began, we inaugurated really this new season a couple of days ago uh, on Monday with um, taking as a verse that we really feel God has put on our hearts, Isaiah 43 verse 19, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Uh, we just, just believe God wants to do new things and, uh, and just bring up maybe springs, deeper springs than we've ever known before because, because he is the Lord. Uh, that's what he wants to do with each one of our lives. That's what he wants to do with uh, this centre that has uh, just faithfully borne witness to God's kingdom and his healing power through decades, 90 and beyond years of, of ministry here. And he still wants to do new things. And we really sense that, that new springs will build up. And that's why we call our, our uh, Cafe Howard's Well, uh, Howard Koch, um, uh, began to, to, to build a well apparently um, and he dug, uh, assuming it would just take about 40 feet and um, he had to dig deeper and he had eventually got to 80 um, before he got to water, at least there was enough water, so he had to dig deeper. And so it's just a, it's just a picture that the Lord wants us to dig deeper and he wants to, to refresh us and to bring new things to life in our lives. So may the Lord just uh, bless us even this morning as we meet together uh, in this building and uh, through technology. And so water really is, the, is a symbol of this new period, isn't it, uh, for us? Um, water is it's essential for life, isn't it? H2O, just the stuff of life, simple. Some hydrogen, oxygen put together, it's the stuff of life. It's simple stuff and it's so necessary for, li for life and uh, when um, these space probes go into space, that's what they look for most of all, isn't it? Water, H2O, two ingredients from which life uh, can come. But water also has healing properties, doesn't it? I don't know if any of you struggle with um, sleep. Some people uh, put the sands on of running water because it helps them to sleep. Uh, some people, to relax, go to places, to spas and places like that. Some people like to go to expanses of water, I don't know about you, I've always liked in my, my life just to sit down by a big expanse of water. I find that very healing. You? I remember even as a schoolboy, a teenager cycling to school, I uh, got a cycle about six or eight miles and it was along a country lane a bit, but there was just some um, trees and forests and if you went a few yards in, it was just, just completely enclosed and there was a stream. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I've got a confession to make. I was a bit naughty, so I actually got out a pipe and I used to smoke a pipe <laughs> by the stream. <laughs> Even more relaxing. <laughs> um, so that was uh, a bit of my rebellious youth, but it was just a, a, a point of just being still by water. It's just something so soothing about it. And even even uh, as an adult, I just love to be by the sea. Cornwall, one of my favourite places, just, just a stare at the sea. Um, I think one person asked, um, we had some old friends around and each asked, what, was it, what would be your ideal place and scenario? And this person who was very social, um, loved just to be with people, was shocked to hear me say, just to sit on a cliff in Cornwall and look at the sea. <laughs> so, I don't like to be with people. Well, yes I do, but looking at the sea is just so beautifully uh, relaxing, isn't it? It's healing in itself. And um, so I just want to read, really, a passage where, where Jesus met a man by a pool, by water, and it brought a healing to him. And it's on your sheet, those of you who are following John 5, verse 1 to 9. 
It's just a lovely encounter with Jesus. And that's what these midday prayers really, we love them to be, encounters with Jesus and through the day. So John 5, 1 to 9. After this, there was a festival of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. This was the Feast of Tabernacles where they uh, commemorated the Israelites wandering through desert, of all things. And so in this feast, where they remember God's faithfulness, even in the parched, difficult wasteland of the desert, uh, Jesus met somebody on a certain day. So verse 2, now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called, in Hebrew, Bethesda, which has five porticos. In these lay many folks that were infirm, blind, lame, and paralysed. And one man was there who had been ill for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? And the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. And he's obviously um, been paralysed of some kind. And there's some mobility, but not a lot. Maybe a stroke, something like that. So no one to help. And there was the water, and the water's got shaken up. Maybe there's an underground kind of fountain, and it just sort of bubbled up. And, and folks around thought that was the time when healing could arrive. And he just longed to get in and experience that healing according to the culture of that place. And he couldn't get there. He was so close to healing and he couldn't get there. <coughs> and verse 8, Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat and walk. And at once the man was made well and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day, it's not a coincidence, but a Sabbath. It was a day of rest, where this man found rest. And, uh, well, that, that man wanted to get to the pool where he believed he could be healed, but he couldn't get there. But what happened? The pool, he couldn't get to the pool where there was healing living waters. But the one who embodies healing living waters came to him. And I just think that's lovely, isn't it? Healing waters came to him. And sometimes I'm sure we've really struggled with these last months. Maybe it has seemed dry for all kinds of reasons. And uh, Lord, where are you? Maybe we've cried out. But the Lord is there. And maybe we couldn't get to the places where we normally get to. Maybe we couldn't go to Crow House where we normally get to. But the Lord is the one who comes to us with his healing, transforming, life-giving waters. That's what he does, doesn't it? We've read in, uh, from chapter 5, but the one chapter before, there's the example of, uh, or the episode of the Samaritan woman, remember? And she just wanted water, and we had a conversation with Jesus about water, and, um, and, and the Lord said to her, everyone who drinks of this water, this physical water, will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. That's what the Lord gives. It's beyond water, H2O. It's living, life-giving water. In what is this, um, what does this consist of, this water? John chapter 7, verse 37, Jesus stood uh, later and said in a loud voice, in a loud voice, so we could hear, If anyone's thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, streams of living water will flow from within him. In him, and he talked about it was the Holy Spirit. So even today, shall we? We've, we've come. We've come here. Many, many of us come here to Crohes. Some of you are at home, and maybe would love to be here. And uh, but it's the Lord Jesus, as He came to this man who was paralysed. He comes to us. And he wants to just pour out fresh, living, life-giving waters. So as you spend time here, uh, just enjoy the peace of this place, the presence of God in this place. We have prepared different uh, prayer walks um, on different themes. One is 
good news, different aspects of the kingdom. If you'd like just to take a moment to be with the Lord, let the Lord come to you and, and, and just uh, refresh you. So take one of these and just do a, do a prayer walk. You can do it physically or, or perhaps even sitting if that's difficult. Another one to receive healing, if, that, if that's a, a theme you want to uh, go for deeper and, and it takes the parable of the Good Samaritan. And another one, walking through lockdown and other times of difficulty. So it's just steps, walking and just stopping and reflecting and letting the Lord come to us to refresh us again. So if one of those you would just like to go and go a bit deeper with the Lord and just let it be a vehicle for the Lord to come to you. So let the Lord come and minister to you and refresh you today. I'm just going to finish with uh, a song and the song will, you will see on the back of your sheets. And we'll just uh, play the music and just be able to reflect on the words we are not allowed unfortunately to sing. You can have it if you know the, the melody, but otherwise just reflect on the words. Which uh, are such a beautiful words. Come to come all you who are thirsty, come to the water.
thank you. That sometimes we struggle to get to that place of refreshment and rest and healing, but you come to us and you pour out your water, your living water. That which gives us peace and transforms us. So come amongst your people today and refresh each one. Lord, may we be like the man in this episode, desperate who looked up into your face, eyes of love, and a smile of compassion, and said, yes, I will heal you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your grace, for your unfailing love. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his grace be upon you. May his presence envelop you and surround you today. In Jesus' name.